Hello everyone and welcome to Physics 213, University Physics 2. I'm Mike Dowding and I'm a faculty member with the Physics Department here at the School of Mines and I'll be your instructor for the summer semester. And um, most of you should have gotten an email from me concerning some of the uh, course materials, in particular the syllabus and where you can find it. But just in case you didn't or you accidentally deleted one of those emails, I'm going to go ahead and show you where you can access that material. The easiest way is just to go to our school's website and up in the search engine we're going to type in my last name. And when you do that, the first of the results will be a link to my profile page here at the school. So there's me along with uh, members of the Society of Physics students which I advise. So there's my shameless plug for the semester. Come and join us. But then if you scroll down to the bottom of the page you'll see the course listings. Obviously this is summer 2020. We are in Physics 2. Uh, if you click on the actual course title it will download the syllabus for you, but there, there are a few more documents there than just the, the syllabus. So if you click on course materials, then you'll see everything else, including the syllabus, which we're going to go through here in just a few minutes. But we also have some links to our Wiley Plus homework website, along with the D2L course link that has been assigned to our course. In addition, we have a formula sheet, actually formula sheets. There's about four or five pages worth of physics equations, formulas, uh, universal constants, etc. Uh, so don't, don't let that overwhelm you when you look at it. Um, we will eventually cover all the materials there, but go ahead and print a copy out for yourself as soon as possible and then just keep that on hand. It's very, very convenient uh, to be able to access that because everything is there. All the equations that you could ever need and all the numbers that you could ever need are there instead of having to, to go back and try and access your book all the time. Uh, but also you might want to read the book from time to time because there are, there are a few things that can be filled in just by reading the book. And you get to use those on the exam, so that's always a plus. So we'll go ahead and go through the syllabus together. We'll also talk about uh, what the schedule is going to look like for this summer and uh, why, why we're using both Wiley Plus and D2L. With Wiley Plus, it's a lot easier for me to assign the homeworks and the exams, but when it comes to uh, posting and grading quizzes, uh, D2L is a little more user friendly, at least for me. Um, I'm still getting used to using D2L. Most of you are, are probably far more proficient in it than I am, but this last semester um, with the, the quick switch over to online um, teaching for, forced me to learn. So uh, I'll just ask you to be patient with me and you know if you have any ideas on how we can make this online experience better, I am all ears. I'm will, willing to hear whatever suggestions you have. So we'll go ahead and download the syllabus there. Get that opened up. And so there we have it, Physics 213. Um, now I've got my office and my office phone number there, but since everything that we do has to be online, we can't actually meet in person. Um, that's, that's probably not going to be very helpful to you. So if you do need to get in touch with me for any reason, email is the best course. I try, to eat, I try to check my email multiple times a day and so if you are running into any problems um, I'll do my best to help out 
not every problem is something that I can fix, but I do know the people that uh, you'll need to talk to, given the given the different issues that you might run into. And so with the office hours, what I'm going to do is I'll have a dedicated office hour every Thursday at 1 p.m. Mountain Time. During a regular summer semester, we would meet on Monday, Wednesday, Thursday for two hours a day. And I know that sounds like kind of a weird schedule, but apparently nobody wants to be here on a Friday over the summer. Everybody wants a three-day weekend, and I can't say I disagree with them. But uh, so I'll, and usually this class would be taught from the one o'clock to three o'clock hour. And so I'll go ahead and just stick with that. Um, I'll, I'll dial into a Zoom session, um, which I will, I will send the link to that out momentarily or within the next couple of days. Uh, but then if, uh, you know, if I dial in at one o'clock and I don't see anybody showing up within the first half hour to 45 minutes, then I'll close down the session. If that does not work for you, then we can schedule some additional Zoom sessions. Um, it, I mean, basically my, my schedule is wide open now, given that everything is online. So you just need to get in touch with me and we'll get things figured out from there. This is what the physical textbook looks like, but we've since moved to an e-text and so this is all the information for that. Um, I highly recommend that you go through the bookstore to make your purchases because with the with the ebook you now have things like first day access and all of that stuff uh, will, will be set up by the people at the bookstore. All you need to do is figure out if you're going to do the opt-in payment which is where they'll just put the payment of the textbook onto your tuition for this summer semester and then you just pay everything together in one lump sum and then the bookstore takes care of your registration for the online portion of Wiley Plus that we're going to be using for the homework and everybody needs to have that online Wiley Plus access, otherwise uh, you will not have a grade book for your grades. All right, um, otherwise if you, if you go with the opt out option of paying for your book, that means you're opting out of um, having the bookstore take care of everything for you, and that means you're going to have to uh, contact Wiley Plus and pay for the access to the book. Um, otherwise, if you don't do that, there is a grace period that you can use, but it's only going to last for a few weeks. And then once that grace period ends, Wiley Plus shuts down your account and you can't access it again until you pay for the service. And un unfortunately, I've had that happen to a couple of students before and they kind of have to weigh, you know, is it is it worth paying for uh, the remainder of the semester having access to YLA Plus versus um, having their having their grade drop a couple of of letters? But um, as I as I said, I highly recommend you just go through the bookstore. It's way easier. They'll take care of all your registration, and all you need to do is use this link down here that my cursor is next to and you'll log in and you should be ready to go. You should have access to the course section, homework sets, etc. And then we can we can start doing the physics. Um, right here, obviously it's an online course, so everything is going to happen online. You do need a computer, you do need internet access, you do need to be registered with Wiley Plus. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <clears throat> and then right here, um, this 111, 113, 
211, 213, all this says is that um, you can't you can't use the credits for both towards a uh, program of study, and uh, that's probably not a problem with most of the students in this class. The 111, the 100 series are the algebra-based physics courses. The 200 series are the calculus-based, and I don't know of any programs of study on campus that will accept the 100 level, but we still offer these because um, the physics department does provide service courses for other schools, and so uh, just just FYI on that. Um, so go ahead and copy this link. That should take you straight to our Wiley Plus page. If you've never used Wiley Plus before, um, every, everybody in my Physics 1 class has to use Wiley Plus. So unless you're a transfer student from another school and you've never used Wiley Plus, um, in that case, you'll, you'll need to click register, make yourself a profile, and then you'll have access to that, that course material. Uh, but otherwise, I'm, I'm assuming that everyone else has used Wiley Plus in some capacity. They remember how everything works. But just in case, at the end of this video, I'll, I'll log into Wiley Plus and just kind of um, show what all the different tabs do. And so when we get to that part of the video, if, if, you've, already, if you've already used Wiley Plus and you just want to end the video there, you can. Or if you just want a refresher, you can stick around and watch the rest of the video. Uh, this next link here, this is just a link that takes you back to um, that course page where we have all of our stuff. And then the other link right here is to our D2L course section, which is where you will access your weekly quizzes. We'll talk about those a little bit later in the video. You can also use D2L to communicate between uh, yourself and other students in the class. In fact, I highly recommend it. If you want to set up a discussion forum, you can do that. There's also live chat options and Zoom options. So if you want to, if you want to put together a, a Zoom session and sit down and do some homework with some of your classmates, over the internet, you can do that. Um, I've, I'll just remind you, for those of you that have used Wiley, Wiley has a random number generator for the homework. So if you if you do get together with your fellow classmates to work out some of the problems, um, remember to work out general solutions and then plug your numbers in because everyone will have the same general solution to these homework problems. And then the prereq for this course would be uh, Physics 211 or the equivalent if you're transferring in from somewhere else. And um, obviously all the prerequisites that come with Physics 211 still hold. So you, you have to have taken and passed Calc 1. And then here we have the, the spread of the grades for the summer semester. We'll have our homework, 150 points. We'll have uh, six quizzes during the course of the semester. So one at the end of every week, with the exception of week four and week eight. And that is when we'll have the midterm and the final exam. For a grand total of 600 points, uh, in physics we're a little more forgiving with our grading scale. We're on a 15 point scale until we get down to the D range, then it's just five points, and then anything below 50% is failing. But I would highly suggest you don't let your grade drop below a 70%. Um, that, that is the indicator that uh, you probably need a little bit of help with the material, whether you, whether you get into, in touch with me or classmate, or I think the Student Success Center 
will have some tutors available online. I'll have to double check with their offices just to make sure. But that is also an option for you. There's going to be plenty of supplemental instruction that is available through Wiley Plus that you can look at. Um, but there, there's also plenty of other online sources that you can make use of in addition to the pre-recorded videos that we will have for our class. Uh, if needed, I'll have an extra credit assignment made available after the midterm exam. Um, everybody has to take the exams, including the final. And just like your homework scores, your exam scores will be loaded onto Wiley Plus. So if you don't have a Wiley Plus account, you don't have a grade for the class. All right, uh, the freedom and learning statement, this basically says that you will earn the grade or you will receive the grade that you earn. I should say it that way. Um, anyone with um, documented accommodations, get in, to or get, in, get in touch with Amanda Lopez at the ADA office and she will be sending me a letter documenting your accommodations and because everything is going to be online um, I, I really can't foresee any issues with documentations other than extended time on quizzes and exams but I've already I've already provided extended time for those anyways so there shouldn't be any issues there. Course objectives uh, spoiler alert this is everything that we're going to learn this semester so if, I'll let you look through that on your own because I'm gonna get to it eventually in our lectures and then student learning outcomes those relate back to um, the course topics that we're going to cover. Academic integrity, please no cheating or plagiarizing. Um, it just doesn't look good, causes a lot of paperwork for you and for me. Policies for this semester. Um, we do have a course schedule that is on the last page of this document, so we'll look at that here in a few minutes. but. Instructional methods, um, everything in terms of the lectures will be provided through pre-recorded videos. I will provide the links to those videos in Wiley Plus. And so I, I will show you where on Wiley Plus you can access those videos. Now that there are pros and cons to having the pre-recorded videos, um, the, the benefits to that are that you can start and stop the video whenever you want. You can rewind, you can watch it again, um, and you don't, have, you don't have to worry about trying to live stream because then there's, there's always going to be issues with losing internet, having a garbled connection, etc. And even if I were to do a live lecture, I would still have to post those for uh, future access by you, the students. So I figure we'll just make the videos, post them, and you'll have access to them whenever you want to watch them, however many times you want to watch them. The one drawback that I can think of is that because it's pre-recorded, you won't be able to ask me any questions during the videos. But that's what the office hours are for, that's what email is for, that's what the, the live chat and the Zoom and D2L is for. Please get in touch with me if you have any questions or you're, you're struggling with one of the, the homework problems. Let me know. We can work through it together or you can get together with a classmate and work through it with them. Uh, again for the exams, there's two of them. A midterm and a final. These are the dates for those exams. So the end of week four 
I'll have the exam open up on the morning of July 2nd and then it will close just before midnight the evening of July 3rd so you'll you'll have uh, a pretty big window of opportunity to figure out when you can sit down and take that exam now just because that the exam is available during those uh, it's probably close to 40 hours that doesn't mean that you have 40 hours to take the exam once you access the exam there will be a three hour timer and so you will need to complete the exam in one sitting so make sure whenever you whenever you go to take the test that you're you're in a location where you're not going to be disturbed for a while you have strong internet uh, you have your calculator and your formula sheet at the ready and then complete the exam in one sitting otherwise if you if you log out of the exam then any anything that has not been answered will be counted as a zero score and then we'll have we'll have the same thing at the end of the semester the final will open the morning of July 30th and it will close the evening of July 31st for these exams you will need to download what is called the Respondus lockdown browser and that's just a software that um, prevents you from opening your browser into another window so you can't go online and and try to look up the answers to the test or anything like that um, but that means that <clears throat> because your browser is locked you also can't open any files like the formula sheets which is why you need to have a physical copy printed off and at the ready when you sit down to take that exam so these will be administered through Wiley Plus and so Wiley Plus will um, grade the grade the exam for you um, you just won't be able to see the score until after that that window of opportunity has closed on the Friday evening when when each of these exams closes and I'll, I'll send out a, a more detailed explanation of how those exams will work as we get closer to the midterm and like the tests all the homework is going to be online with Wiley Plus these assignments will be graded weekly now I will warn you uh, this is a summer semester we have eight weeks which is just a little bit more than 50 percent of what we would have available during a regular semester and so that means to get all of the material in we have to go at about twice the pace with that in mind a three credit hour course like this is going to feel like you're taking six credit hours during a regular semester and so if you are taking any other summer courses I I really recommend that you don't take more than two because whatever whatever credits you are earning for those classes double that number and that is effectively the the amount of effort that you're going to have to put in for that class um, so if you were taking three three credit hour courses during the semester that's nine credit hours but with the additional pace that's required to get through all that material uh, it would be the same as taking 18 credits during a regular semester and that's that's kind of uh, a well it is a bit too much for any student and so you know one one class during the summer should not should not be too bad two classes is probably just right as long as you're committing yourself full time to the schooling but if you know a lot of us probably have a part-time job or something going on during the summer and so 
this this one class is is probably going to be enough in terms of uh, all the work and dedication that you're going to need to put into this to be successful. And I have all of the due dates for the homeworks on the schedule down below, along with uh, the dates when the weekly quizzes will open, the dates when the quizzes will close, and the dates when the exams will open and close. As far as attendance goes, it's an online course, and we are not going to be meeting in person uh, we're also not going to be meeting during any live Zoom sessions unless it's an office hour. So I'm not taking attendance, but that means that you need to be motivated and make yourself watch those lecture videos and do the homework. Make sure you're completing the homework on time, that you're doing those weekly quizzes, and that you're doing the test. So here I've got uh, some more detailed policies on YLE Plus. Um, again, there's the homework. Um, as far as the late homework goes, I realize that there are some, some uh, special conditions or exceptions that happen. You know, it's, it's uh, severe weather season, so maybe the power's out or the internet goes down for a day or so and you weren't able to get all the homework done. Uh, but I would, I would ask that you not wait until the last minute to start your homework. Or if, if there's some other reason why you couldn't get your homework done, just, just get in touch with me and I can extend one of those homework dates for you. But don't expect me to be extending every homework date. We only have so much time in this semester and eventually we're going to run out of that time. All right, <clears throat> so some more details on the exam there. Each exam will be 30 multiple choice questions worth five points each for a total of 150. There's the respondus lockdown that I mentioned before. For D2L, we'll have the quizzes. Quizzes will open up Thursday mornings. They'll close Friday, after, uh, Friday evening. Uh, the only exception to those are the weeks where we have tests. Those weeks you won't have a quiz, you'll have the test. The exams, as I said, are timed. Once you access the exam, you have three hours to finish it. Um, as for the quizzes, I'm not, I'm not going to require you to use Respondus on that. But um, you, should, you should only need about half an hour to complete that quiz. And then you also have your group discussions that you can set up in D2L. Please take full advantage of that. That's what it's there for. If you're falling behind, you need some extra help, get in touch with me, get in touch with a classmate, uh, contact the, the tutoring center over at, over at Surbeck. Uh, if there's anything else that's, that's bothering you, I realize that this is a a pretty stressful and anxious time um, with, with COVID and having to move everything online. And so the, the, the student services offices are still open. You can give them a call, email them. They can help you. And then this last part here, before we get to the schedule, uh, this is just something I found from Jamestown Community College, but it, uh, it does a really good job of kind of listing off the characteristics of what it is to be a good student. And so if you can go down this list and you can, you can check off the majority of these bullet points here, if these describe you, then you're going to have a good semester. You're going to have a successful time in this class. But if you go down this list and these things don't sound like you, then you're probably not going to have a very good experience in the class. Again, this is, a, this is a situation where you need to be very self-motivated to get this stuff done. And if you don't, then you're looking at either a failing score or an incomplete 
and we don't want that to happen. And now we get down to the tentative schedule. So let's talk about what all of this means. Uh, each day I have a chapter and a section of that chapter listed. What this means is that at the end of this day, this should be the progress that you are making in watching the lecture videos. So by the end of Wednesday of the first week, at the very least, you should be done watching the first three videos of chapter 21. That's not to say that you can't watch those videos sooner. If I have the videos posted, then feel free to watch them. You can work ahead in your homework. You can read ahead in the book. That is your prerogative. But once we get to Thursday, Friday, you have the first quiz that's going to open on Thursday morning. It's going to close that Friday night. Um, any quiz that I give will only cover material before. So quiz one, only expect quiz one to cover chapter 21 material. For quiz two, I would say just chapter 22 material. Uh, but when we get to quiz three, uh, that, that could be a combination of chapter 23, chapter 24 material. Um, also, we have the due dates for the homework sets. Each homework set will be due just before midnight on the listed date. Uh, again, you can work ahead on the homework. I'm actually going to have every homework set made available to you day one of class. So when you look up on Wiley for your assignments and you see like, uh, you know, 10 different assignments, don't get overwhelmed. Those are just there for you in case you want to take that self-motivation and work ahead. And if you want to, you know, if you want to read or read the book and watch the first three videos for chapter 21 on Monday, and then you want to start the homework on Tuesday and you get all the homework done on Tuesday, then you can chill on Wednesday. You can wait till the, the quiz opens, take the quiz, and then, you know, maybe you, maybe you come back on Friday and you watch all the chapter 22 videos and you start your chapter 22 homework that next Monday. You know, it's all up to you. This, this is really a, it's not, not quite a self pace because we do have our deadlines here, but you, you can go through this material as fast or as slow as you want. Just keep an eye on these deadlines. Uh, we'll get to the end of week four. That's where we'll have our midterm. <clears throat> and just like the quizzes, the midterm will only cover material um, before. And so here at the midterm, we will just have completed chapter 25. So all of chapter 25 along with chapters 21, 22, 23, 24 uh, will be fair game on that midterm. And then for the final exam, um, I, haven't, I haven't quite decided yet, but um, I'm pretty sure that this is going to be a comprehensive final. So it will cover all 10 chapters of the material that we go over for the semester. All right, so that is our schedule for the semester. Um, it is subject to change, obviously, de depending on if there are any issues that we run into during the course of the semester. But now we're going to uh, go and take a look at D2L real quick. So I'll click on D2L, and it's asking me to log in, so I'll do that. <clears throat> and this is what we should see when we get to our course page. 
Over here we have the same syllabus. We have a link to the uh, School of Mines course page. Um, where is it? Right here. So ev everything is just kind of linked to everything else. With the exception of Wiley Plus, I don't have I don't have the links that go back to D2L or to the school's website on Wiley Plus. But here's a link to Wiley Plus through D2L. So if you're accessing all of this stuff through D2L, then you still have access to everything. Uh, the one exception being the formula sheet. I haven't uh, uploaded that to D2L, but um, if I can if I can remember later, I will. Otherwise. You know where it's at. It's on the, the school's webpage. And since I'm still learning everything that there is to learn about D2L, the only thing that I'm going to use D2L for for this semester are the quizzes. You can access those under the assessments tab. So there are quizzes. I don't have any posted just yet, but come, come back Thursday of, of week one and you should have access to the first of the quizzes. Those quizzes will be self-graded. The grades will import to a grade book. And at the end of the semester, I will import the grades from the quizzes to your Wiley Plus grade book. At any point during the semester, you should be able to account for all of the points that you have earned, whether they're on uh, D2L or in Wiley Plus. When I provide the extra credit assignment, Wiley has to have points to track for that extra credit assignment. So it may look like Wiley is tracking additional points in excess of the 600. And so it might look like that extra credit is hurting your grade, but don't worry. At the end of the semester, I am only going to take the points that you have earned against 600, and that will account for your final course grade. That is D2L. So let's go take a look at Wiley Plus. And, oh, doesn't look like that link wanted to work. Well, that's why we have a backup. So I'll take I'll take a look at that link, see what's wrong with it, but we'll go back to the course materials page and there's the same link to Wiley Plus and okay, this one is working. Good. So when you get here, if you already have a Wiley Plus account, all you should have to do is log in and you should have immediate access to our course and all the course material homework. Otherwise, you'll need to create an account, take about five minutes, put together a profile, and then you can access your homework. Now, I already have an account, so I'm just gonna log in. And I'm already logged in with a different class section. Okay, so what I'll have to do is um, log in as an instructor. Uh, but up here, please note, um, you, you've got all of this stuff right here, physics 211, 213, 225. What does all that mean? Well, those are the, the different physics courses that we use this textbook for. We're using the same textbook for physics 1, physics 2, and um, what we call a modern physics course. But this is the important part right here. You want to make sure that it says Physics 213 Summer. Um, so I'm going to see if I can log in. There we go. All right. And so real quick, I'm going to show you where you need to look so that you can access the lecture videos. And then for anyone that is familiar with Wiley Plus, after, after I show you that, you can close out of the video uh, unless you want to stick around for a little refresher as to how some of this other stuff works. 
So under read study practice, this is where you're going to find all of our lecture videos. And where you need to look is, you might have to scroll down a little bit, but down here in the bottom right hand corner, once I start uploading the videos, they will show up down here as uh, instructor provided content. And so all you'll have to do is just click on the video and watch it. And those, those videos will have the same titles as what you have here for each day, chapter 25, part two, chapter 28, part three, so those will be there. Now, I don't have all of these videos made yet. I only have about the first three weeks done, but I hope to have the remainder of the semester's videos done and posted by the midterm. So as, as you're working your way through the course content for the first couple of weeks, I'll be hard at work making more videos for you to watch. And by the, by the time you get to the midterm, then I, I should be able to devote a little more time to uh, getting us ready to wrap up the end of the semester. But back to Wiley Plus. Since we are at the read study practice portion, um, first thing I'll bring to your attention is down here in the drop down menu it says math skills. And so what this is, is it's basically um, some, some remedial math that you can go back and refresh if, uh, if you're a little rusty on some of your geometry or converting units, sig figs, vectors, whatever. Um, you can click on these and Wiley will provide you with some supplemental material on that. Otherwise, if you click on the drop down arrow, you will see all of the chapters for this book. Now, this is Physics 2. We've already gone through the first 10 chapters or so in Physics 1. And the next 10 chapters um, doesn't really cover what we need. We need the stuff that covers electricity and magnetism. That doesn't start until chapter 21. And it actually goes through chapter 33, but we're only going to have enough time to get through chapter 30. The electromagnetic oscillations, alternating waves, um, this material gets a bit more complex. It would be better suited for an upper level course in physics or um, an upper level course in electrical engineering. But in addition to that, there's all these other chapters and you have access to all of these because you have paid to have access to the full text of the book. That's what your e-text is for. So if you're interested, you wanna, you wanna check out something on relativity or nuclear physics or elementary particles like quarks, go for it. Nope, you paid for this stuff, check it out. So let's, uh, let's click on the first of the chapters that we're actually gonna look at. If we click on chapter 21, uh, this'll upgrade the page here. Here we have the individual subsections of the chapter. So you can click on one of those and pretty much everything from the book is right here. You've got all of the, the reading, the definitions, the diagrams, the equations, the constants, and every now and then they even, they even work in some simple supplemental stuff like videos, simulations, some practice problems. In addition, you've got all these links over here, like video samples additional problems, animations, demonstration videos. There's a lot of additional course content here and 
it's accessible to you, so please use it. All right, now I believe regardless of what chapter you select under the read study practice, um, let me go back there. So regardless of the chapter that you select under read study practice, let's go like chapter 26. Down in this lower right hand corner, you should still be able to access all of those instructor videos that I post. So down down here, every every video should be accessible regardless of what chapter you select. All right, the next tab that we have here is assignments. Now, I'm making this video before the first day of class, so the assignments are not yet activated, but I. I do have them all uh, set up and ready to go. So you'll click on assignments. Here you'll see a list of the assignments for each chapter. You'll click on that chapter. It'll bring up a list of the individual problems. And you'll work through those problems. Most of the problems may have multiple parts where you have to put in uh, multiple answers and units. And then you can hit submit. If you get the answer right, Wiley will highlight it in green and then it, it will be fixed. You won't be able to change it, but if you get anything wrong, it'll highlight it in red and then you can go back and change it. I will allow unlimited attempts for these homework problems. And that's, that's not because I'm being really, really nice, but with all the problems that have multiple parts and multiple entries, it's a lot easier to do the first part of the problem and hit submit and see if it's right and then move on to the second part especially if the second part of the problem depends on your answer from the first part uh, there's nothing more frustrating than trying to fill in every single answer you hit submit and then like half the stuff is still wrong so a a problem where you might have about five different things that you have to enter I would expect anything from, you know, maybe five to eight submis submissions for that problem to be average. But if it's taking you like a hundred submissions to get a problem like that completed, then that tells me there's a big problem. Either you have no idea what you're doing with the physics or you're just fishing for answers. And if that's the case, if I feel that people are abusing the system and fishing for answers, then I can cut back those unlimited attempts to something more practical, like 10 attempts per problem. But then you're, you're going to be worried and anxious about, you know, do I have it right? Do I have it right? Am I going to waste an attempt here by hitting submit? Well, I don't, I don't want you to have that anxiety as you're going through the homework. Uh, but do keep in mind, even though you have unlimited attempts on the homework, you have one attempt on the quiz and you have one attempt on the exam. Um, another thing that you should watch out for with your assignments, when you go to enter a value into um, one of the boxes there, if you hover your cursor over that entry box, the cursor will, will bring up a, a highlight that tells you if there are any restrictions to the entry. Some of these problems will have an error range of about 2 to 3 percent. And so you need to make sure as you're going through and calculating your work that you're not constantly rounding your values because that can very easily take your answer beyond that that acceptable two or three percent error. Um, with that said, what is it, what does that mean by two percent error? Well, if if the answer to one of your problems is supposed to be a hundred, 
then Wiley should accept anything between 98 and 102 because that's 2% of what the, the actual value of the answer is. But if you're outside of that range, then Wiley's not going to accept your answer. Even though all the steps in your physics may be right, just by rounding off a little bit, Wiley's not going to accept your answer then. Some other things that you might see in, in the, the answer box might be restrictions on significant figures. And so the answer may require only two significant figures. If you try to enter more than two, it's not going to take it, even though your answer might be right. You just need to, to uh, convert it down to, to two sig figs. Um, let's see what else. Uh, you're also going to have units. A lot of these, a lot of these problems are going to require units. So, if that's the case, you'll see a drop-down menu with units that you can select from. Uh, basically, with the units, you just keep selecting until you find the right one. But do yourself a favor: try to select the, the correct unit the first time, because when you get to the test or when you get to the quiz, you only get one chance in selecting your answer. Once you start getting some things right in the assignment, then you will automatically see the grade book begin to populate with scores. And this is the grade book that we will be using for the entire course. So all of the homework will be listed in this grade book. When you're done with your exams, those scores will be imported into this grade book. And at the end of the semester, this is where I will input the quiz scores from D2L. The last tab that we have here, um, I say the last tab because this one is just a, a downloadable e-text. So if you want to download the textbook, you know, you've paid for it, so go ahead and do it. And then it's yours. As long as you've got that file, you can reference all the material from the, the 40 plus chapters that this book has. But Orion is another supplemental software that Wiley Plus uses. And I don't require students to use Orion, but Orion is a pretty good tool to prepare for your exams. As I said, the exams are going to be multiple choice. Well, Orion provides quizzes um, with the material from each chapter and almost all of the problems are multiple choice problems and so it, make, it makes for a pretty good parallel to what you could expect on the exam. Um, so the way Orion works, uh, since we're starting our material in chapter 21, we come down to chapter 21 and we would, we would click begin and it says, first, we want to know how confident you feel about this chapter. Now, we haven't looked at chapter 21. You know, we probably don't know anything. And so we could say, well, I don't know anything. And in that case, Orion is probably going to tell you, you know, well, maybe you should go back and, and read some stuff. Or it'll, it'll give you a really, really simple problem from the chapter. Whereas if you've already gone through, watched all the videos, you've done all the homework, you've taken the weekly quiz, then you know you can say, yeah, I know this stuff, I'm ready to go. Well, that tells Orion basically where to begin the difficulty level for the quiz that it's going to give you. So we hit continue. And here's the first quiz problem that they give us. Now it will it will start a timer here, but that's not to worry. That's that's mainly for um, the collection of statistics because all of your answers and your timing go into a national database. Um, your your name is not attached to it, so don't worry about that. But right here, this tells you of all of the students in the nation that have used this Orion software and have attempted this problem, a little less than 50% of them get it right. And so that, that kind of that gives you the impression of 
you know, if, if, if you really, really, really think that you know this material, then you should be in that, that top 50 percentile of people that get it right. So we go through, we look at all the, all the content from the problem, we, we take a few minutes, we do some work on the, on the side somewhere, and we come back and we pick one of our answers. Now, I'm, I'm just going to randomly pick an answer. I don't know if, if it's going to be right or wrong, but I'll, I'll click on C. And I need to hit submit, but before I do that, Orion wants to know, once again, how confident do you feel in your answer? And this, this goes back to, to the difficulty level that Orion is going to present to you with the problems. Because um, if, if you look at this problem and you're like, oh, I have no idea how to do this. And then if you get it wrong, then that, that tells Orion, you know, maybe we need to step back on the difficulty level a little bit. And I'll just say I'm almost confident, even though I'm, I'm guessing. So here we go. Let's see what happens. And it went to the next problem. Well, how do I know if I got it right or wrong? Right over here. The previous problem will show up on this bar graph. And if it shows up in red, that means I got it wrong. If it shows up in green, it means I got it right. The height of the bar indicates the difficulty level that that problem held. So this, this was actually... That first problem was actually a little bit less than medium in terms of difficulty. Um, let's see what else I wanted to discuss. Oh, um, so I got that first problem wrong. And you notice it doesn't tell me what the right answer was. All it's going to tell me is if I got the answer right or wrong. Well, obviously, if I get the answer right, I know what the right answer is. But if I get it wrong, it doesn't tell me what the right answer is. And how is that helpful? Well, this is helpful as a preparation for the exam. Because on the exam, you get one chance to answer the question. And so on the exam, you're not going to know if you got that question right or wrong until you get the exam back. Granted, I will tell you what the right answers were on that exam, but here you're not going to know that unless you get the problem right. And that, that's kind of the point. You want to go through and you want to see if you're getting these answers right or wrong. Now this, this first chapter, chapter 21, has 19 problems on the quiz. I don't expect you to go through and do all 19 of them right away in preparation for that midterm test. Remember that the midterm has about 30, or it does have 30 multiple choice problems on it. Oops, I didn't want to go all the way back there. And that midterm test is going to cover chapters 21 through 25. So that's five chapters. 30 questions, so that's about six, six questions per chapter. You could very easily make yourself a practice test using Orion. You could click on chapter 21 and do six problems from chapter 21 and see how many you get right or wrong. And then you could go back to Quit. Yeah, I want to quit. There we go. Why won't it let me quit? Okay. So you, you can do six problems from chapter 21, and then you could do six problems from chapter 22, six problems from chapter 23, and so on. And time yourself. Um, it it really shouldn't take more than about 90 minutes to go through and do this uh, midterm exam or the final exam. But I have, I have 
allotted you twice that time um, for your convenience uh, and as a courtesy um, just because I know that there there's enough um, stress and anxiety on a test especially if it's going to be online and on a computer but you know set a set a timer for 90 minutes and go through and you know do six problems from every chapter and then see see what the results are and then if uh, if you really bombed the chapter 24 material go back and study the chapter 24 material and then come back and try taking another practice test of another six problems from each chapter and so you, you could probably go through and do that three or four times depending on how many problems are available in each one of these chapters all right so let's go back to Wiley plus and that brings us to the end of all the tabs uh, so I'll just say, oops, this is this is saying physics 211 there. That's obviously not what we want. Um, but the the physics 213 class will will have exactly the same dashboard here. Um, I just now noticed that that was different. But when you log when you log in with your link, it'll say uh, 213. Looks like if I want to access the 213, I'm going to have to log out and log back in using my uh, instructor credentials. But that brings us to the end of this video. If I need to uh, post any additional materials for the course, I will post them here on the school's main page. and. I will also do my best to post them on D2L. Again, I'm still learning, but um, each day this seems to get a, a little bit easier and a bit more user-friendly, so hopefully I'll have all these uh, bugs worked out by the time the fall semester comes around. But again, contact me if you're having any issues. I'll be dialing in for those office hours on Thursday. Stop by, say hello, even if you don't need help on a homework set or anything. You know, it'd be nice to see what you all look like face-to-face, -face, so to speak. Or if you just want to dial in and shoot the breeze, we can do that too. So, Monday, dial in to Wiley Plus. Make sure that you have access to the homework sets. I will start uploading the videos um, probably Sunday, so the, the evening before classes start. And I'll, I'll also post this, uh, this introductory slash syllabus video along with those as well in case you ever need to come back and and uh, listen to anything anything that I've said here. Other than that, I guess that's the end of the video. So have a good summer.